See, she immediately turns into a little girl. Whoa! Just like the last time you were riding a rocking unicorn or horse. Most people have never ridden a rocking unicorn. I have not. But I rode a horse a lot. Oh, this is almost scary. <laughs> wow. Not scared? You won't fall off, I guarantee it. No, it's just tipping very far. Yeah, he feels like he's gonna tip over, doesn't he? It's a fine. It makes it illusion. exciting. He cannot tip over. Good unicorn. See, if I was with my regular crew back in the Central Valley of California and I said, he will not tip over. He never tips over. They all take that as the cue. To push they it go, over? Well, there was that one time. <laughs> yeah, but that was her fault. It was a young lady, uh -huh. brown hair, braided, <laughs> sunglasses on her head. It, she was asking for it. it never mind. It's, hmm. <laughs> No, I've tried to tip him over for a long... He's 15 years old. Wow. And I've been trying to tip him over the whole time. I can't do it. Well, he must be very well made. And for the last few years, every time I try it, I throw out my left knee. So I quit trying. Oh. It. He's 714 pounds. He's not going over it. Wow. Real easy. You see, he's got stops in the front. And uh -huh. he comes all the way forwards. That's as far wow. as he can go. Same thing in the back. Same in the back? as far as he goes. I'm a good designer hey, too. Yeah. Wow. This is a great idea. I had to be crazy to think I could do it. Like all not, good ideas. Not being a woodworker or anything like that, I just decided it needed to be done. <laughs> Wait, so you, and starting from nothing, you taught yourself to make a giant rocking unicorn? I've been a heavy equipment operator all of my life. I never made anything out of wood. <laughs> then there was the lady awesome. that told me I couldn't. That helped out quite a bit. I love a challenge. Nice. <laughs> and I love having fun. So after a thousand hours each building these, I get to come out and play wow. with people. That's wow. Without you people, I wouldn't be having anywhere near as much fun. <laughs> I'd be standing out here next to my horse going, okay. I made a thing. <laughs> Every once in a while, I'd climb up on him and ride him standing up and fall off. Oh. You know, but I, I don't always fall off when I ride him standing up. In fact, I've only fallen off twice. I wasn't unconscious for that long. It wasn't <laughs> real bad. Oh, no. You're, you're, you're trying to make it sound better is actually making it sound worse. Well, it's terrible when you, you knock yourself out and you wake up and your kilt is in your face. <laughs> well, wait a minute, that's not where that belongs. <laughs> it's okay, it was Corona Fair. Nobody saw me. There wasn't anybody there. That's an insider joke for anybody who's ever done Corona Fair. They have a crowd of like nothing. Oh. I, I was there for eight hours one day with the two rocking horses and a crew that I was buying lunch for. Uh -huh. $90 in f diesel fuel just to get there for the weekend. And I grossed $7. Oh. Yeah, that hurt. I didn't go back. That's sad. I haven't been to um, any other Renaissance fairs that I remember. Apparently, when I was a baby, my parents took me to one in Minnesota. Oh, I Minnesota think this one is pretty good. Minnesota's got some big ones. Well, I'm doing better at this one than I ever did at the uh, Southern Fair or Northern, the big ones in California. Oh, good. I'm glad. I hope you come back because this is... This is incredible. This is insanely fun! Well, it was a, it was a multiple fair tour. Because what I did is I, I came up in June and did... Oregon Renaissance Fair for two weekends. Uh -huh. And I left the horses in their trailer at the promoter's ranch. Uh -huh. And drove back home for three weeks and came back up and picked up the horses in the trailer and went to Canterbury in Oregon. Uh -huh. And did two weekends there. And then the very next weekend was the first weekend here. And when this one is over,